Well, someone has to warn you. Summer 2023 in Yosemite National Park is by far not your typical year. From the snowmelt that has caused intermittent flooding in the valley to the lack of a reservation system to get into the park, this year is like no other. To begin with, I'd like to discuss the park entrances and when to get into the park. As I mentioned, there is no reservation system to get into the park this year. That means that there is a lot more traffic than usual. So if you've come in years past, don't expect to know what you're getting into. To put things into perspective, the last time that there wasn't a reservation system in Yosemite National Park was 2019. That year saw nearly 5 million visitors. Last year, 2022, we only saw 3.6 million visitors. That's quite the difference. And I wouldn't be surprised if this year we broke records on how many people visited the park. The first thing that you'll want to do when trying to enter the park is calculate how much time it will take for you to get from wherever you currently are to the park entrance. For example, if you have a hotel in Mariposa, it's going to be about an hour's drive just to get to the park entrance. So you want to make sure you wake up pretty early to beat the line. You want to make sure that you get to the park entrance at very least before 8 a.m. Let me repeat that. Get to the entrance before 8 a.m. or there's no reason to even come to Yosemite in my opinion. Once you get to the entrance station, don't be surprised if there's a line, especially if you don't heed my warning and show up after 8 a.m. Not only do you want to wake up early and get to the park early because of the line at the entrance station, but we also have the issue of parking in the park this year. You could wait in line for an hour at the entrance station and then not be able to find parking in the valley. This is a real possibility that a lot of people have faced this year and you might face as well if you don't heed my warning. Get to the park early, find a parking spot, keep your car there for the rest of the day. Do not plan to move your car until at least nighttime. There is a new pilot system in place to try and text visitors to let them know the parking situation inside the park. And I highly recommend texting this number so that you can get this information while you're visiting. To give you an example of a typical day in Yosemite, here is the latest day, Sunday, June 25th, and how fast the parking was completely gone in Yosemite National Park. Once these parking spots completely fill up and there's just gridlock traffic, you don't want to be in the park. It's a nightmare being stuck in your car for hours after you already waited hours to get through the line at the entrance station. I've seen a lot of people parking off-road and it just makes me so sad to see that the natural resources in this park are being destroyed. But what can you do? There are just too many people. Please don't ever park off the side of the road like these people have. You never know what you just parked on, what you could be blocking, or a lot of people actually have been blocking traffic with where they park. It has been a very wild show here in Yosemite. One of the wildest places that someone has parked this year is in the Awani Meadow. Not only is that a protected restoration area for the plants that are growing there, they also parked on the helicopter pad. So you are actively putting people in danger if you park there. And someone thought that that was a good idea. If someone had needed a rescue, I can't imagine what would have happened. 
Every day now, there has been a shunt in place at the El Cap crossing area to disallow visitors' uh, cars, essentially, to get into the east side of the valley. This happens randomly uh, just when parking is totally full and it's just too congested on that side of the valley. And it's basically un just too unsafe to let people in. This is actually footage of when the shunt is in place. That's why no one is really on the road. Um, if you leave the valley, if you were lucky enough to find parking in the morning and you leave the east side of the valley while the shunt is, shunt is in place, you're not getting back inside the east side of the valley. So don't do that. Like I said, find a parking spot, park for the day, do not move your car under any circumstance unless you are ready to leave the park. Now, Yosemite Valley is pretty big, so what are you to do if you can't drive around it? My suggestion, besides walking, is if you can, bring bikes. Bikes are the absolute best way to get around the valley. This is true any year during the summer, during peak season, but especially this year. I have seen way too many tired people walking miles and miles and miles just to get back to their car. They're not even sightseeing. But Gina, doesn't Yosemite National Park have a shuttle system? Yes, yes it does. However, I would not recommend relying on that shuttle system one bit. Well, it is a nice system that they've got in place there. It's just not reliable. This year there have been lines that have been an hour or two long just to get on the shuttle bus. And when the shuttle bus appears, the bus is full. So you could wait hours for the bus and then not even be able to get on. Please don't get yourself stranded out there. Make sure you have enough water with you because you are going to walk a lot if you didn't bring a bicycle. And if you did bring a bicycle, please be very, very safe. There are plenty of wonderful bike trails and bike paths in Yosemite National Park. They're paved. If you go to the bike rentals place, which they run out of bikes, so bring your own bike. Don't plan on renting a bike. If you go to the bike rentals place, you can find a bike map that shows you all of those wonderful bike trails in the valley. I don't recommend biking on the road. I'm not even sure if you're allowed to. I'm, I'm pretty sure you are, but I just don't recommend it. There have been so many accidents already. Traffic is nuts. People are looking up at the waterfalls. They are not looking at you. They're also just looking for parking spaces. So if you're going to ride your bike, oh my gosh, please be careful. And honestly, I do not recommend riding your bike in the road. Stick to those bike paths. Another reason why Yosemite Valley specifically is so congested is because Tuolumne Meadows, so Tioga Pass, and Glacier Point Road is closed. There's nowhere else for everyone to go. While Hetch Hetchy and uh, Mariposa Grove or Wawona is also open, they're both about a 40 minute to hour drive away um, just to get there from the valley. And even those have been filling up. I've been seeing some alerts that those have been filling up early morning, no parking at those locations. There are just too many people here this year. If you're not prepared to wake up early, if you're not prepared to park your car and walk, if you're not prepared to face the crowds, don't come to Yosemite. Now that being said, I want to look at the positive things. This isn't all negative. I just need you to be prepared. Yosemite National Park is still one of the most beautiful places I have ever laid my eyes on and it is worth seeing even if you only get to see a fraction of the park. From breathtaking views to wonderful magical hikes, Yosemite really is just a wonderful place. And I don't want this video to stop you from coming. I just want you to have a good time while you're here. If you beat the crowds and you're prepared, it is still really fun to be in Yosemite right now. I will say though that because of the flooding this year, there is 
pretty much no swimming anywhere in the valley. It is just too dangerous. The river is too high. And even if it looks like it's safe, you can easily get swept away with how fast that river is going. So plan to do hiking, which that you would want to do in the morning too. The trails have been getting crowded. Um, plan to go to the visitor center. Plan to just relax and enjoy. Sit in a sit in a chair and just look up at some climbers and watch the climbers go. The, these are all fun things that you can do in Yosemite Valley and it's a wonderful experience. All right, well, thank you for watching. I'm sorry if this sounded sort of like a rant, but I just really want people to be prepared and I feel like a lot of this information is not out there. Summer 2023 in Yosemite National Park is different from all other years and you want to be ready for that. If you found any of this information helpful or if you have any questions, please go down to the comments section and let me know. And please subscribe and like. This really helps me out. I'm a small creator and I'm trying to um, give people valuable information about destinations such as this. Thank you for watching. This is Moonstone Mountaineer. My name is Gina and I hope you have a fabulous day.